What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Animan Plus News. This is episode 9. I'm your host, Alex Light, with Sparky3. Back in the saddle, shout out to my co host at Animan Plus and Lot Harder Gamers, Zach, for stepping in for taking care of Animan Plus News, episode 8. I've been under the weather all week. You might can, It's still a little bit here. You might can tell a little bit with my voice. I'm, I'm on the other side of things. Uh, I still have had quite a bit of coughs. So I do apologize in advance if I have any quick cuts because I'm dying of coughing while trying to do this episode. Hopefully, we'll make it through, though. Uh, for this episode, we do have a few different things here to talk about. Uh, we have a new anime series announcement that I really want to highlight because I feel like this has a lot of potential. We've got a uh, bit of a situation that I want to discuss. And, of course, our normal manga sales. We've got a couple popularity polls and everything along the sorts. Also, involving my under the weatherness you know you know you may be able to tell a little bit in my voice uh, just for the record i do have a cough drop in my mouth i do apologize if that slurs any of my words i'm trying not to die of coughing while trying to do this episode fingers crossed that we'll make it through so the very first thing that i want to address it's a pretty big situation if you haven't heard about it well i'm glad i can tell you i'm glad i could be the first to tell you uh there is an anime YouTuber known as Totally Not Mark. If you guys have not heard of him, he is one of the larger anime YouTubers out there that covers Dragon Ball Z and One Piece being a couple of notable bread and butter pieces of content that he covers. He's also done some other stuff. He's currently going. He's currently reviewing Naruto Blind. Uh, he's also just leading up to the release of Spider-Man No Way Home. He's been reviewing all the classic Spider-Man movies, starting from Tobey Maguire's up to Andrew Garfield's, etc. Well, there was a recent situation that popped up where a hundred. 150 of his videos were uh, copyright claimed by Toei Animation, where if you would know this content, if you know Totally Not Mark's content and you watch it and you listen to it, whatever, then you know that the content that he does cover and the in the form that he covers it is within the Fair Use Act, and uh, this is just Toei being Toei. Um, now, this is Toei because he has been in contact with Toei from one of his late, latest videos, which I do want to say, uh, as of the recording of this uh, news episode, he has taken down the two main videos addressing the situation because he just ultimately w- really wants to try to to move past this because of what it has done to his life and his team right here and close to Christmas where this pretty much very much fucks his career at the moment. Uh, it's going to be quite the climb back up in terms of finances. Uh, so he really just wants to kind of move past it at this time. Uh, I don't know if there's any sort of other underlying uh, situation which prompted the videos to be removed. You know, he did say there was a lot of personal issues outside of this whole debacle um, that has him, you know, on edge with everything. But when it comes to this situation, you know, we've seen this happen on numerous occasions before. Toei will strike at random times for content that is ultimately within the Fair Use Act. And it's it's an unfortunate situation because when it comes to the totally not not, uh, not Mark thing, he even put up email proof where like Toei was striking these things down within seconds or minutes within each other, one video after another, which is indicating they did not actually review the content. To give a, another example of that, there were some videos that were struck down that didn't even have Toei content in it. It was like you know, well it did. I mean, when I say it didn't have Toei content, it didn't have any actual anime anime. Uh, content it it was it was drawn stuff stuff that his team had drawn uh, drawing videos uh, those even got struck down you know the amount of time that it takes to you know go through the copyright r- uh, dispute process it, it is a very lengthy process uh, the YouTube system for this is quite broken um, and basically to go through and dispute everything would take literal years uh, to, you know, to dispute everything be, be with the timetable process on it. And when it comes to situations, it's really unfortunate because uh, Toei, it, they, they, walk, they walk both sides. And that's what sucks about this is that on one side, they'll reach out to content creators, you know, to promote certain pieces of content. They've even reached out to Totally Not Mark before to work with him. And then they turn around and they do stuff like this. Um and it sucks because, like, you know, this really fucks his team. This fucks him in terms of his, his career. Like, this is this is a major setback financially. You know, shout out to everyone who has been able to turn to his Patreon and help him out, you know, in this time. Uh, but, I mean, it, it, it sucks. It sucks. Uh, I definitely recommend going and looking into it while his videos are taken down. There are plenty of people who have brought this situation to light, including, you know, PewDiePie, you know, one of the, the second largest channel on planet Earth. Um, so I definitely recommend 
recommend going and checking out some other people's uh, opinions on it. Uh, Moist Critical, he put up an you know uh, a review on this as well. And it, it sucks, dude. It sucks flat out. You know, if you have not heard of the situation yet, uh, please do some digging on it. Um, just kind of look into it because this is this is fucked, man. We need to move past this. And when it comes to the situation, one one thing that really kind of pissed me off a little bit was just like of how much like okay, that's just really fucked up with the level of gatekeeping that is. There is a way to region block content where whenever he posts a video it won't post in japan for example which japan is the one that has these very strict copyright laws um you can't get that region blocking ability unless you have like a youtube manager and getting a youtube manager is not an easy process in fact totally not mark was literally told by youtube that he is not able to get one he is not qualified to get one the only other option for him is to pay a shit ton of money to outsource getting another sort of uh content creation manager that has access to these tools so it's just a fucked situation of where there are these key essential things that content creators should be able to have and it's completely gatekeeped. Um, again, please look into this situation. Uh, you know, I'm not the most knowledgeable person in the world on everything involved. There are a lot more and more uh, knowledgeable people than me. So I definitely recommend going and listening to other opinions uh, who are more notable content creators and understand more about the, the di- uh, dispute process. But from everything that I've seen and everything, all the research that I've done, it, it's just a really fucked process and it's a really unfortunate situation. So, you know, I, want, I know I don't have the biggest voice in the world. We are still a growing show and I understand understand that completely but even with the voice the small voice that i have i did want to highlight this for everyone to kind of be aware of in case you haven't even heard of it so definitely like i said go look into it moving on from there uh next piece of news so last week uh zach plugged that the tokyo avengers season two was in development well now the tokyo season two is confirmed so that's cool um we should expect a more larger announcement for it here in the near future so that's very exciting season two is going to be an incredible season I cannot wait for it. Uh, Silent Night and what was the other arc that will be in it? Um, Silent Night and I'm drawing a blank on the other arc, but I will say season three, uh, presumably season three, is going to be absolutely fantastic. That is the Kanto Incident arc. Um, and I'm very much Black Dragon. Black. Well, no, Silent Night is the Black Dragon arc. I'm drawing a blank on these arcs right now. They're all blending together. Um, but yeah, Kanto Incident, that should be season three. And Kanto Incident is is awesome. There's a lot of game-changing things that happen in Kanto Incidents. I'm looking forward to that especially, but Silent Night is also a very good arc um, that I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, next up, got a couple of popularity polls. Uh, the first one that I want to shout out is a series that I, th- I definitely think always deserves some more love. It's a series that I'm reading here and reviewing on Anime Plus called Mission Yozakura Family. It is, in, it is in Shonen Jump, and I 100% recommend giving this thing a read. I cannot wait for the anime one day. This series is a lot of fun and a lot of great action, beautiful art. It's just a phenomenal series. It's one of my personal favorites. Uh, for the first popularity poll for Mission Yozakura Family, coming in first is Shion. Okay, I could see that. Uh, Kingo at number two. Uh, Tayo at three. Shinzo at four. Futaba at five. Koichiro at six. Mitsumi at seven. Uh, Soya at uh, Sue. Ayo at eight. I at nine. And Nano at ten. So the top three doesn't necessarily surprise me. Everyone loves Shion. Shion is a very... Uh, it's a very, she's a, very, she's a very fun character. She's a very fun character. Uh, Kingo as well. Uh, Kingo is also a very fun character. Uh, in fact, he, I, I love the most recent chapter, uh, from the week before actually that had a very, uh, focused moment on him, uh, with him and Fud- uh, Futaba and fantastic. Um, Definitely recommend giving the series a read, but that is the first popularity poll. We also got the second popularity poll for JJK and some interesting ones to say the least, and some interesting ones that uh, did not make the list, uh, which is also very something to talk about. Got a lot of people talking online. Uh, naturally, uh, Megumi is number one, Gojo two, Yuji at three. Those three are kind of to be expected. Four is Ghetto, uh, five is Nanami, uh, six is uh, Inumaka, uh, seven is Chozo, eight is Yuta, nine is Toji, and ten is Nayo, uh, Naya. So the most notable ones is No Maki. That is the one that has a lot of people talking is that Naki is not in this at all. Uh, Toto not being in this as well. And Nubora uh, also not being in this. Uh, Maki got 12, Nubora got 11, and Toto I think got 14. Uh, So I thought those were the three most notable to not see in there, but mostly Maki. 
I'm very surprised Maki is not in the top 10. I feel like that it, out of the three that is named, Maki not being in there is probably the biggest robbed in my mind, 100%. That is a rob. So, I don't know. Got a lot of people talking about that one. Uh, next up, got a little bit of a controversy and some news with it. Uh, Misfit of the Demon King Academy. Uh, the lead voice actor for Anos. Uh, Tatsushiha. Ta- I don't know. He's a scumbag. Fuck him. Suzuki uh, has been replaced by Yuchiro uh, Umihara uh, for the lead voice role. So, apparently what happened with uh, Suzuki here is that he's a scumbag. And he was having some affairs on his wife, who a lot of people probably know his wife. His wife is, of course, Lisa. One of the most notable anime opening singers out there. I mean, she sings pretty much everything for Sword Art Online, for example. And a ton of other animes out there. But uh, they were married in 2020. And to my understanding, he was having an affair with her with some younger chick. Not When I say younger, she's not underage. At least not to my understanding, she's not not, not underage. But it's some younger chick on that was on set or something. I don't know. Scumbag level, in my opinion. Anyway, so he uh, announced back a couple months ago that he was taking a step back from all things across the industry. Uh, and was willing, you know, said that he would step down from the roles. So anyway, that is your new voice actor for the lead there. Next piece of news is out, honestly, kind of funny. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's, that's mean. It is. It's funny, but at the same time, it's just like, damn, okay. Well, it was faster than I thought. But anyway, uh, the Netflix Cowboy Bebop series has been canceled after one season. Damn, that was quick. I mean, this just came out here recently, and it already got canceled. Woo, that was fast. Uh, the, vo- the the actors have come out and comment on this. One of the actors saying it's just like, you know, I guess it's not as good as we thought it was, whatever. I don't know. But uh, that is, and that's an unfortunate thing, man, because we're still waiting as anime fans, as manga fans. We are still waiting for that first hit, you know, for that first live action hit that is made over here, mind you. There are plenty of live action anime things that are a hit you know i've said it a thousand times before like the death note movies over in japan ronio kenshin movies and even the tokyo revengers movie over in japan all those are great but they're based in japan they're created by japan they're very respectful of the series anything that comes from us is complete dog shit i don't think there's anything good that has come from us i mean from the stuff that we have created over here in the west there are good things about it they have done things in a live action that aren't that isn't terrible, but as a whole, it's terrible. Like one little example is like the Death Note uh, live action movie that Netflix did. You know, the only thing that was good about that whole film was Ryuk. William Defoe as Ryuk was incredible, and I will die on my fucking hill about that. That is a phenomenal portrayal. If they ever, if we ever attempt another Death Note movie over here in the West, I want William Defoe as Ryuk. I will not settle for anything else. But like everything else that we seem to produce is just complete dog shit. You know, right now, of course, there's the One Piece series. I still have hope in that one because of how much Oda is involved. Everything, literally everything has to be approved by him. There is not a single decision that cannot go past him. Like, I mean, like it has to go through him. There's nothing that can slide by him. So I do have hope in that. But like you, Hakusho, well, we've seen what Yusuke looks like. At least he looks cool. But how's the rest of it going to go? I, I don't know, man. I mean, it's funny because it's just like, it's funny and like, just like, uh, oh, here we go again sort of way. But at the same time, it's just like, come on, man. Can we get one thing right? I feel like Cowboy Bebop would have been more, one of the more easy ones to, to get. And here we are. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Uh, I, uh, uh, so speaking of live action, you know, of course, we also attempted a full metal movie and that ate ass. So speaking of full metal, uh, a new series from the creator full metal just kicked off in monthly Shonen Gangan uh, called uh, Yomi no Sugai. And I have not checked out to check out the first chapter yet it has not been translated anywhere. Uh, but the first chapter, the, the little description that I read that I was just like, OK, what do we have going on here is that it starts off in like a medieval village. And then there's just like people with helicopters and guns and just slaying the village. It's like, OK, well, hold on. What's happening here? Uh, the art looks phenomenal for it as it would. I mean, it gives you all, I mean, it's the full metal alchemist creator. I mean, I mean, the art's great. Their art style is their art style. I mean, it, it, it looks like Full Metal Alchemist art style, essentially. Uh, so this is one that's going to be on my radar that I hope, hopefully, we'll get to check out at some point in the future. Uh, last piece of news here before we jump into our manga sales, which is always my favorite part. Uh, so there was a new series announced by Netflix, uh, an anime 
anime, not live action, called Bubble. The reason I wanted to highlight this is because, man, there's a lot of important people involved with this series. There's a lot of notable people that are involved with this. I think like that alone just gives me like, damn, this has a legitimate a lot of potential. So let's kind of run through it. First and foremost, it will be produced by Studio Whip. I'm about to have a coughing fit, so hold on. Oh, man. Oh. All right, now that I'm back from my coughing fit and almost dying, anyway. So it is produced by Studio Wit. Um, the director for Death Note and Attack on Titan is the director here. The writer for Madoka Ma Magica and Fate Zero is the writer here. Of course, uh, Hiro Yuki so uh, Soano, uh, who have done music for like Seven Deadly Sins and a bunch of other series. He's done some music for 86, one of my favorite series of all time now, uh, is doing the score for this. So that's awesome. Watching the trailer, the score, his his touch on the score is very much noticeable there already. So that's fucking dope. The uh, the artist for Death Note and Bakuman is doing the character design here. Naturally, I mean, I mean, naturally, <laughs> I mean, uh, it just makes perfect sense. Uh, the voice actor for Meliodas, Shoto, and Eren is going to be in this. The voice actor for characters like uh, Light, Death the Kid, and Binumaru from Fire Force, they're going to be involved with this. It comes out in April, April 28th to be exact. The exact description for this is... In a Tokyo where gravity is broken, a boy and a girl are drawn to each other. Ooh. The story is set in Tokyo after bubbles that broke the laws of gravity rain down upon the world. Cut off from the outside world, Tokyo has become a playground for a group of young people who have lost their families, acting as a battlefield for parkour teams' battles as they leap from building to building. Hibiki, a young ace known for his dangerous play style, makes a reckless move one day and plummets into the gravity-bending sea. His life is saved by Yuta, a girl with mysterious powers. The pair then hear a unique sound audible only to them. Why did Yuta appear before Hibiki? Their encounter leads to a revelation that will change the world. No, honestly, that sounds pretty dope to me, man. Parkour is always really awesome to watch. Always been a fan of watching like parkour YouTube videos. Uh, you know anything like a Ninja Warrior, American Ninja Warrior was always fun. And then uh, you know if you, this is this is throwing it back here. Shout out to anyone that remembers this show. If you do, please comment down below on the YouTube uh, video for this. YouTube.com forward slash Sparky Three Jump City Seattle. That was on G Four at one point. It only had one season. Four parkour teams competing for a championship. That show was so fucking cool. If you've heard of it, shout out to you. If you haven't, please go look into it. So, I mean, just that description alone sounds super interesting. I mean, everyone involved with it gives me so much faith for this show right off the bat. So, I personally cannot wait to check this out when it comes out on April 28th. Go watch the trailer for yourself. It looks absolutely fantastic and incredible. All right, moving on. Let's hit the uh, manga cells. I'd rather not get, like, another coughing attack before this episode's over. So, I'm going to try to wrap this up. All right, so we are now in the first week for the December volumes for Weekly Shonen Jump, uh, which is a, a light month, but I mean, that's fine. It is what it is. Uh, the first one is One Piece Volume 101, which does complete the three-volume massive cover from Volumes 99, 100, and 101. It looks awesome. If you don't, if you didn't know about that, just give it a quick Google. It looks absolutely incredible. Uh, 986.7K sold in its first week. All right, pretty good. I would expect it. I was expecting a million, though, so I don't know. Mashal, Volume 9, with 43.6K. Undead Unlock, Volume 12, with 15.7K. Candy Flurry, Volume 3, which, of course, is dead, 2.5K. Yikes, 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 bro. Candy Flurry, whew, what a series. Dog shit. Uh, Weekly Shonen Magazine Volumes, third week for this one. Uh, a couple Cuckoos, Volume 9 with 97K. Four Nights of the Apocalypse, Volume 4 with 77K. K. I put an extra K on there. All right. Uh, Shangri-La Frontier, Volume 6, 72K. Bakamano Guitari, Volume 15, 71K. Matchmaking of the Amagami Household, Volume 3, 43K. Eden Zero, Volume 18, 38K. My Charms Are Wasted on Korowa Madaka, Volume 2, 24K. A Saint Join My Party, Volume 2, not ranked. 8K was the last update. And Eye Contact Volume 1, also not ranked. 3K was the last update. Uh, not a good start for that Volume 1 there. I would expect Eye Contact to get axed. I say that, but Weekly Shonen Magazine is weird, I guess, with their axing. Because Tesla Note 
for example, had dog shit sales for its like first two volumes. Like, I mean, like 3K, 4K, 5K, like dog shit, axe worthy levels. Instead, what do they do? They don't axe it, they move it to a lower tier magazine and it gets an anime. I don't know, man. So we'll see what happens to eye contact. All right. And then to finish off the show, we do have the top five in Japan. This is dated for December 5th. Number one, naturally, One Piece, volume 101. Uh, number two, Kaiju number eight, volume five. World, number, coming at number three, World Trigger, volume 24. Coming at number four, One Punch Man, volume 24. And coming in at number five, The Apothecary Diaries, volume nine. Uh, well, that is going to do it for this episode. Only one coughing fit for the episode. Hey, that's pretty good. I'm supposed to do Lighthearted Gamers later with Zach. So I, I, I feel pretty confident I can make it through that episode considering it's not just me talking nonstop for 20-something minutes. There's someone else talking and giving me a chance to take a break. Uh, make sure to go check out the normal show of Animan Plus. We were on a break last week. 59 is to come out next week as planned and then we will be on a break for the christmas week where we will not be recording and then we will finish off 2021 with episode 60 where zach and i will be talking about our, some of our favorite new series from this past year that we have checked out whether if that came out this year or something we discovered for the first time this year as well as taking a look ahead for what is for 2022 which is being posed to be a pretty phenomenal year for anime and manga hopefully you guys took away something positive from this comment down below your thoughts on anything we talked about here today whether it be the totally not mark situation what's your take on all of this what about bubble have you checked out the trailer do you think it looks legit did everything that i tell you kind of sell you on it already based on who's involved what about any of these sales you know what else did i talk about popularity polls do you read mission news the quarter family if you don't you should with that said guys hopefully you have a phenomenal day my name is ox light with sparky three see ya Oh, 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 oh,